there's a lot of humor in your work. Humor is really hard to do, I think. And I wanted to ask you about that balance and, and is humor important to you and why? Well, fiction isn't medicine, it's not vitamins, it's food, right? It nourishes this essential part of us. And, you know, we eat food for nourishment, but we, we cook it and season and flavor it uh, for pleasure. Uh, and humor is, is simply an element of pleasure. It is also sometimes the only viable response to the dark absurdity of life. It's like that line from Blue Singers, you know, laughing to keep from crying. Mm -hmm. And as a writer and a reader, I want novels crammed with as much life as possible. And for me, you know, laughter, be it dark laughter, nervous laughter sometimes, it's just an essential seasoning of existence. Indeed. So, from the title on, Anatomy of a Miracle, it made me think of Anatomy of a Murder, which came out 60 years ago mm -hmm. by Robert Traber. And the novel has a journalistic aura about it. It's also full of investigations of this miracle, which is um, an army veteran, Cameron Harris, is in a wheelchair. Uh, he was injured in Afghanistan under mysterious circumstances, we find out. And suddenly, in front of the busy bee convenient mart, he stands up and walks. So I'm wondering, um, were, did, were you playing off Anatomy of a Murder a little bit, or was the investigative aspect of this appealing to you? Or? I wasn't. The journalism uh, angle came from, you know, some novels start with a voice and some with a story, and this one was the latter. So I had to sort of cast about for a way to tell it, and, mm -hmm. and, and having a first-person narrator uh, felt uh, too limiting for what I wanted to do. Uh, and having a, a third-person omniscient narrator uh, just felt a little uh, wobbly in the sense that I'm writing a novel in which characters are grappling with the existence or non-existence of a divinity. and. Uh, with that godlike voice of the third person omniscient that felt a little, a little dissonant. And so I came up with the, the curveball of, of, of telling it um, in the guise or the disguise of literary nonfiction. So with uh, narrative scenes, obviously, but also with uh, you know, figures and facts and statistics and quotes, uh, some of which were uh, factual and some of which are completely invented. <laughs> uh, but a strange thing happened during the writing. I, 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 conceived this in, in 2014. And, and when I conceived it, I, I thought of this voice as the most authoritative voice I could have for telling the story, the most reliable. But over the course of the last few years, that very reliable voice, which we'll call news for short, uh, was recast in the public imagination as the most unreliable of narrators, <laughs> right? Fake okay. news for short. And you know, this novel is the, the definition of fake news. Um, that's why the word truth sits in the subtitle. Right. But um, the, the framework then um, sort of took on a, a very tangled life of its own. It, indeed. Yeah.